All right. Welcome, everybody, to this Wednesday's uh, version of our team call, which is the 30-Minute Mentor Series. I've been super excited, like beyond excited to be um, on this call with you guys today and the guest that we have, uh, which is Keisha Fitzgerald. And I'll, I'll be able to share a little bit with about her before she goes into it. Um, but I want to remind you guys, I'm looking over here at the dates for Summit. We have Team Beachbody Coach Summit coming up in, I don't know exactly how many days, it's a little less than three months on July 13th of 2016. So a little less than three months, we have National Team Beachbody Coach Summit in New Orleans. What I want you guys to know about that is that, uh, and I've had this, I mentioned this because I've had this um, asked to me recently. You don't have to be any certain rank or anything to be able to go to Coach Summit. It is for absolutely everybody. So everybody's invited. It's highly encouraged that you get there to Coach Summit. Most of the, the stories of somebody having like an aha moment in their business or where they take their business from uh, part-time or referring products to a full-time uh, business and thing for them, which you're going to learn about today, was when they went to Coach Summit and they saw this bigger picture of what Summit could do for them. So once again, the dates on that are uh, July 13th through the 16th. What you're going to expect is you're going to show up on a Thursday. That's when the opening ceremony is and the closing ceremony is on Thursday night. So that's, that's uh, how it works. We do have a team meeting on Thursday morning. So if you're planning on coming, uh, you can come in on Wednesday night or very early Thursday morning and be a part of our team uh, meeting and event with Miguel Carrasco, Morgan Rieger, um, and many other great coaches, uh, even outside of our team uh, as well, that will be there. So we want to be there. We want to see you guys there. And I'm, I'm just telling you guys, just commit to going and then talk to me or talk to your coach and we'll figure out a plan, like how many all access challenge packs you need to get sold to buy your plane ticket. And then once you're there, we'll help you figure out your room and board. I've seen people like six people to a room, eight people to a room sleeping in sleeping bags, you know, from midnight to six o'clock in the morning, they would get up for the workout and you're never in the room anyway. So uh, if that's a concern for you, we'll help you guys get that figured out. So uh, that's, that's our biggest thing that we have coming up. The other thing I want you guys to know about this month is the all access uh, challenge pack promotion. It's like the best deal ever at 160 for a year's worth of Beachbody on demand workouts, plus a bag of Shakeology. So make sure that you're Going, reaching back to everybody that's told you no or given you some sort of objection about the price and, and just offer this to them and say, hey, I was thinking about you and I know uh, six months ago or whenever it was a tough time for you, I want to talk to you about this and then start the conversation back up. Uh, there's also a cool promotion of a cool Team, team Beachbody branded backpack uh, that you get for hitting Success Club. So that'll be a cool thing for you to have and wear and, and be involved in the wear and share of that. Um, and before I mention Keisha right now, we're going to do something a little different after this call with Keisha. I'm going to end the 30-minute mentor series call when she is done, and I'm going to invite anybody to stay on for an extra 10 to 15 minutes with me. And I'm interviewing one of my brand new coaches. He's lost 80 pounds with Beachbody Workouts. He became a coach two days ago, did everything I sent him in his new coach welcome email, watched all the videos, reported back to me. We had a getting started right call. I told him to go Facebook Live and share his story. He did. We contacted those people and he's at Success Club 6 with one new coach in his second day. So we're just going to talk to him. He's nervous because uh, he's brand new, but we're going to talk to him, interview him, kind of get that perspective of how he's able to do that. So you're welcome to stay on afterwards after this call with Keisha and, and hear him talk and share his experience. Um, and, and we'll go to that later. But with that being said, I'm going to introduce Keisha. Um, Keisha is a personally sponsored coach of Brigitte Linford. Brigitte Linford is one of my personally sponsored coaches. Um, she's going to be speaking to us. Uh, she's going to hit on a lot of things about how to speak to your people using social media, and she'll hit on some other topics that, um, that you may need to hear today. But I'm going to go through some of her stats. Um, one thing I want you guys to understand about her, like she treats us like a business, but it always wasn't like that. Uh, she's not about the money, although money is what's created the lifestyle that she has and what she's able to do with her boyfriend as they're com completing uh, dental school in the near future. But she is an eight-star diamond coach in her first coach business center. And the thing that I admire the very most about Keisha's business is that every single one of those diamonds in her first business center are one to three star diamond coaches. So they're not just barely diamond, falling in and out of diamond, they're solid leaders that are one to three star diamond coaches. And that's a phenomenal uh, 
accomplishment that she's doing in her business. So you're going to want to be watching that and learning from her on that. She has 15 life star, lifetime star diamond, our diamond coaches. She's a success club all-star legend and executive leader on the leaderboard, which is the highest rank or rung of the leadership ladder. She was a six-figure earner in 13 months with her team beach body business so in, within 13 months she had a six-figure business she left her full-time corporate job with google in april of 2015 so she just passed this this month past her two-year anniversary of being a full-time stay-at-home coach and mother of her dog <laughs> and she has tripled her income actually that she had at google prior so she's accomplished a lot in her business and I'm gonna just mention this because I mentioned her income. Each body does not guarantee any level of success or income. Each coach's um, uh, result because of their effort, skill, and diligence. So I wanna make sure that we share that. And Keisha, I'm just gonna share this because I know this is something you'd share, but I think it's, it's powerful for people to know and understand this is the type of business that it is. Let me mute everybody real quick. I hear some background noise. Um, okay. so. I'm going to share this with her. We were at dinner with her and Sina a Monday night a week ago in New York City eating Mexican food. And yes, we were eating chips and salsa because you can never say no to that. But I was just asking her because I know that she left Google two years ago. I know that she built a six-figure income in 13 months. So I was just asking her, um, how close are you to the Million Club with Beachbody? I asked her that. And she has accumulatively earned, I think this is something important to know about this business because when we can share stories of people that are doing this, uh, it's powerful. Because it's not just me, it's not just Jennifer Greenberg, it's not just Brigida, it's not just all these Stardime leaders, there's lots of us out there. And so she has earned over a half a million dollars in her Team Beachbody business since the day that she signed up as a Team Beachbody coach. So she's well on her way to that mark uh, in the company of joining the Million Club with a lot of hard work, effort, diligence, skills, and, and doing what she loves in this business. And that's what we're going to learn about. So, Keisha, with that being said, I'm going to pass the time over to you, and you are officially unmuted. Whoa, I'm like sweating while you give me an introduction here. But thank you so much, Scotty. So sweet of you. Um, what's really crazy, I want to dive into this and talk to you guys about the content that I have for you guys today. But what's really crazy is, um, like Scotty mentioned, I didn't come into this actually wanting to build a business. So he listed off a lot of like accolades. And I think a lot of times when people have reached these big milestones, you think that they came in and they understood that this was a business straight out of the gates. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how to authentically share your story on social media and um, a couple of like tricks and tips that I do when I was building my business while working over 50 hours a week at Google, but still like keeping my sanity and doing this in a way that was really fun and fulfilling. But first I want to give you just a little bit of backstory just to add a little bit more color to all those crazy accolades that Scotty just mentioned. Um, so when I first started, I actually bought P90X and I was following my coach, Brigitte Linford, who as Scotty mentioned is his coach on Instagram. She was the only coach that I was following. I didn't reach out to her and ask her for support. I ordered my P90X and I thought maybe she would earn commission. And she had a cute family and she seemed like a nice human. And so I put her name down. That was literally the extent of it. I didn't know about her story really. I just thought maybe someone would earn commission. So she reached out to me on Facebook and she invited me to be in one of her groups. And I thought that this was a really sketchy, weird business. And I was like, she's so nice, but like I'm not interested in whatever she's doing. Um, and then I was doing P90X and how many of you guys have done P90X? It's like really hard. And on day four, it was 90 minutes of yoga. And I was like, Ooh, I don't know about this. So I quit and restarted and quit and restarted. And finally I reached back out to her and I was like, all right, what are these challenge groups that you're talking about? Because while I told her that I wasn't interested, I was watching everything that she was doing, posting on social media. I wasn't liking or commenting on any of her pictures. Like so many people, due to us you know um i wasn't doing that but i was watching her so i reached back out to her she told me about shakeology i did a quick google search on it I was like if this stuff tastes even kind of good i'm drinking this for the rest of my life so i signed up as a discount coach telling her that i did not ever want to build a business um so those discount coaches never write off those discount coaches as people that never want to build a business even the ones that who with conviction say they don't want to build a business because things change, right? Your life changes or you realize um, what opportunity you have in front of you. And so at the time that I was in Brigida's challenge group, I was a discount coach and I was in her team page. And 
I noticed that a lot of people were posting about how fulfilled they felt. Like they were getting messages from challengers that were crying and saying, because of you, my life's changed. And I actually had an awesome job at the time. I was working in Seattle as a project manager. I had a ton of career trajectory. I actually really liked my corporate job. I had an awesome manager, um, kind of a really awesome setup. But I was really unfulfilled with what I was doing, you know, 50 hours a week. And I was like, what if, like I started to kind of think in the back of my head, what if I did this as a side hobby? Like this would be really fulfilling. I would feel like I was making an impact on the lives of other people. Okay, that's pretty cool. I see all these coaches are doing this. I bet I could do this too, just as a side hobby, not as like a real business. That was my mindset. Um, so I ran my first challenge group in January of 2014. And I still hit Success Club 10. And I actually went diamond really quickly because I was so really just pumped up. I was talking to a lot of people, word vomiting all over them. Um, but it wasn't until Summit, which when Scotty talks about Summit or you hear other coaches in the network talk about the importance of Summit, it really was not until Summit, which was six months into my business, I was hitting Success Club and I was a diamond rank coach that I didn't understand the magnitude of this. Um, this is when I also started binge watching all of Scotty's YouTube videos with my boyfriend. Um, and I was like, okay, this guy, like his, his videos are sometimes awkward and I love them because he's just like driving around in his car or, you know, like whatever. They weren't picture perfect videos. And I was like, this guy seems really normal, really down to earth. If he can do this business, I can do this business. And I started to look at all the people that were seeing success and instead of thinking, oh, good for them, I thought, why don't I go do this? I can freaking do this too. And I'm going to do it in a way that feels good to me. Doesn't just look good on paper, but does um, do this in a way that really is enjoyable and adds a lot to my life. But I also knew if I wanted to get to the point where my coach Brigitte is at or where Scotty and Gabby are at and other coaches that maybe you look at in the network, I was like, I'm going to have to work and I'm going to soak things up like a sponge, but I'm not going to let inaction um, breed all of this fear. I'm not going to just soak up information and not do anything because the majority of what I'm going to share with you guys right now, I've learned by just doing, not by soaking up all of the information and just sitting and pondering and waiting for the right time. Like that inaction stuff creates all this doubts in our head of like, there's so much that we don't know when in reality, what you know and what you're going to know is going to happen from you just doing it, right? Action is going to give you the best results. Um, and even if you fumble, like you should see some of my earlier messages and like my early Facebook posts, they were like, oh, like I see the on this day thing. And I'm like, I have no idea what I was doing. Um, so we all have those humbling experiences, but I wouldn't give that up for anything because I learned so much by simply doing. So what I want to talk to you guys about tonight is kind of that mindset of you are just going to decide that you're going to treat this like a business. This doesn't have to be something that you want this to be a million dollar plus business for you, or you want to even be this, uh, this to be a six figure business. But there is a lot of satisfaction and a lot of personal growth that comes from building the business. If you were to take all of the accolades away, you were to take away all of the income, all of even the friendships, which are like my most treasured part about this business. If you were to take that all away, the person that I am now, because I decided to build a business, that person is a completely different person than I was three years ago. And it set me up for the foundation of my future marriage and how I'll be as a mom to like, I have a dog, so to humans. Um, so I think that's really important. If you decide to build a business, you're setting yourself up to hit milestones along the way, even if you don't see this as something huge. I didn't see this as huge, but you have to get those deposits in your confidence bu bucket, like as you're moving forward, to know that you can do this. And then your why starts to evolve even more as you see what's possible. So one way to give yourself a win every single day is to post on social media, right? Um, any type of business, like our business is ourselves and we're sharing our journey openly. If Scotty didn't share his story, Brigitte would have never found him. If Brigitte didn't share her story, I would have never found Brigitte. So you kind of have to think of the magic in that, that you have a platform. It's so much easier for us to build a business through social media than it is to build a brick and mortar business. Um, but the truth is on social media, you have to show up every single day. Target or pick your like even favorite like coffee shop doesn't close their doors just because they don't feel like it. Because what that does is it creates this confusion amongst your audience. That credibility takes time to build. And in addition to your external credibility, like the audience that's following you on social media, that internal confidence that I was just talking about, those deposits in your confidence bucket, those come from doing things and giving yourself wins every day so that you can continue to move forward, right? 
So in this business, um, I'm going to post every single day on social media. A lot of people have different opinions of how many times a day you should post. I'm just always going to post no matter what. Okay. So that was always my rule of thumb was I'm going to do this every single day. I'm going to show up in the best way that I can every single day. Um, I also cater to my particular target market. Okay. So my target market and your target market might be different, but I think your target market is essentially yourself. So the stage of life that you're at, the things that you're interested in, um, the things that you care about, the things that you would be interested to follow from someone else, those make up the criteria of things that you're also going to post about. Your social media isn't necessarily your social media anymore when you're building a business like this because you're also just catering to people. You're sharing different components of your life um, so that other people can get to know you better. You build this like connective tissue and that foundation of your relationship by not just, not exclusively talking about health and fitness, but talking about other aspects. Like if you're a mom, I want to know that your child's like throwing Legos at your face while you're working out. I don't want to see this picture perfect, like Pinterest as, as picture, or we want to know about the times that you didn't crush your workout because it's really boring to follow on social media. Someone that constantly crushes their workout every single day and has rainbows and butterflies coming out of their butt, right? It's just not realistic. And it creates even more doubt in people that are watching you because they're already skeptical. We have to assume that they're skeptical because most people don't sign up when they're first approached. I didn't sign up when I was first approached. Um, Scotty creeped on Lindsay for months before he signed up as a coach, right? So you kind of have to remember that it's important that you're staying consistent, but it's also important that you're being authentic and you're being real. And if your timeline right now, like you can do a self check or maybe even find like someone else on the team or someone that you vibe with to kind of check each other's timelines, but if you're only talking about happy stuff, um, you need to talk about the struggle part. Does that mean that Facebook should become your diary? <laughs> no, because would you want to follow someone that's constantly complaining? Would you want to follow someone that isn't finding positive lining or like the silver lining in hard times in their life, right? You wouldn't want to follow that either. So think about the perception of what you're giving off. And it's not, it's, it's that you are being more authentic. So the days that you don't crush your workout or the days that it's hard for you to meal prep, or you wanted to eat those donuts in your office or whatever, but you didn't, I want to hear about the struggle, not just about the five out of five crush my workout. Today is awesome. I love life. Right. And not that you don't love life, but it's important to remember that people are going to connect with those different aspects and the person that you're growing into as you evolve in your business, more so than this picture perfect person who looks like they have it all together. Um, so I think it's really important to remember that you get content every day. Like one of the main questions that I get from coaches on our team is kind of, how do you come up with Facebook content? Um, so what I do, I'm going to tell you guys a couple of things that I think about. If you are actually, and everyone's going to roll their eyes when I say this, but if you're actually doing your vital behaviors, including personal development and your workout, there is literally no way that you won't have content. No way. Because you have to be thinking while you're doing personal development. And you should be getting audible. You should be, you know, listening to podcasts, whatever it is. Like if you're commuting, if you're doing laundry, if you're cooking, put headphones in, soak this into yourself. And I will tell you, the first couple of months of my business, I thought, I'm so positive, I'm so happy, and I'm so busy, I don't have time for that crap. I would never have lasted more than three months in this business if I didn't do personal development. And I'm a relatively naturally optimistic person, right? So it's not about people that have problems. It's about smart people that are also training their brain um, to be more comfortable putting yourself out on social media, to be more comfortable with someone saying no to you. Because most people are going to say no, right? It gives you that internal confidence. But in turn, it also gives you content to post about on social media. Um, things that you think would be valuable to your audience. So questions to ask yourself, what am I struggling with? What inspired me today? You know, how have I grown as a person recently? How have I grown my muscles? Um, you know, what's my excuses that I'm dealing with right now? What is my like, plan of attack? What am I working on right now? Am I working on a particular program? Am I working on something personal in my life? Sharing those types of things, you know? What does success look like to you? Um, what would, this is something I do often and for friends on Facebook, you might notice this, but, um, I contrast old me versus new me. So old me's mindset versus new me's mindset, old me's habits versus new me's habits. Because honestly, majority of my coaches that I'm trying to bring into my organization or challengers, they are old me. They are the me that I was when I first started, um, 
being interested in P90X than when I first started coaching. They don't necessarily relate to this lifestyle of being a full-time coach and creating the income that we've created or having this lifestyle. They might not relate to that, but they can relate to the struggles of staring in their closet and being like, oh my gosh, why did I let myself get on the back burner? I'm so frustrated with myself. Or why am I working so hard for someone else's goals? Is this as good as it's going to get? And do I have to settle with this? Right? So that's what my niche person or my target market is going to connect with that person that I was at the very beginning of my journey. So a really easy way to do that is to contrast that old me versus new me. And you don't have to say it that way, but essentially like the girl that I used to be is what I often say. Um, another thing, like if you're pumped up about something, share what it is that you're pumped up about. If you listen to a podcast, you found a book, you found a cool deal, you saw something was on sale. Like whenever like yoga pants go on sale, I'm like, my niche girl cares about that. So I'm gonna tell everyone when these yoga pants are on sale. Anything that you would find value in, share that publicly. You're becoming a, a river of just awesomeness for people that are following you on social media, what you would want to follow, right? It's not just going to be muscles up, did my workout, crushed it, crushed it, crushed it, because that's uninspiring to people because most people don't crush it every day, right? I know I don't crush it every day. Um, how did you win today, right? Use the notes section of your phone. So one thing that I did that worked really well for me, especially for those of you that have full-time corporate jobs while building this business or even like crazy mom life or dad life or whatever, um, is I would set aside a chunk of time where I would do content creation. I did it on Sunday nights at 9 PM where I would sit down in our apartment and I would map out our week. So my boy, my boyfriend, Cena is a full-time student at NYU dental. And, um, so we would map out, okay, what do you have going on? Like, what do I need to be out? What do I have for work? What social commitments do we have? What do we have going on in our life? And we would actually sit down and make a game plan of our week. And what that also did was gave him, it made him have more buy-in early in the business because he felt like it was our business, not my business that was taking me away from him during certain times because he knew what the game plan was. I mapped out when was I going to work. Um, and then I also proactively, I, I picked five to seven areas of things that are interesting to me. So for example, entrepreneurship, I live in downtown New York City. I'm a dog mom, obviously fitness, nutrition, um, this lifestyle with coaching, fashion, things that I'm interested in. My niche or target market is also interested in those things too. So I literally just made a list of five to seven topics. And on my weekly plan, when I sat down with Sina on Sunday nights, I would proactively map out what I was going to talk about each day. Because what I find with a lot of new coaches or even tenured coaches is they take so much time to write a post that they forget that this business is not just about posting. Majority of the people that you're gonna find in this business to join your challenge groups or your team are gonna be from personal messages that you send to them in a one-on-one -on -one capacity, right? So if you're just expecting, and, and I'll tell you this to be really honest with you guys, I thought that I would get to like a certain point where I'd get really comfortable with this business and I would just post and like everyone and their cousin would come to me. Truth is, the only difference between me and you is maybe I've been here longer. I don't even know if I've been here longer than you. Um, but it's just a matter of understanding that most of the conversations that you have behind closed doors are going to be your challengers. It's not going to be the people that like and comment on your post all the time that are necessarily going to join your group, but those people are watching. And if you're creating this connective tissue and you're building a foundation in your relationship by them getting to watch you and feel like they know you and vibe with you, they don't even, they don't have as much, um, objection to what you're doing because they trust you because they understand that you are adding value and you're being really authentic in what you're posting about. So an action item here would be sit down and map those things out. Um, if you feel like your schedule is totally crazy, be proactive, right? Monday morning, I'm going to post about empowerment. Monday night, I'm going to post about my workout. Tuesday morning, I'm going to post about a transformation on our team. Tuesday night, I'm going to talk about something tasty I ate, right? Like whatever it is, right? Mapping that out proactively a hundred thousand dollar business, maybe that's not your goal. Let's just say it is a hundred thousand dollar business, a brick and mortar business would have a marketing plan, would have a marketing department. The people that you probably enjoy following on social media, um, those are people that have a plan, right? Because they have content and they take the time to craft that content and they attract the right people into your business. I have never been a high recruiter in this business. 
ever. Um, but I recruit people that want to build the business often because I'm so honest about the work that goes into the business, but I'm also really honest about the fulfillment that comes from the business. And I keep it really real, which is exactly why I admired Scotty so much when I watched all of his videos on YouTube is Scotty keeps it real, tells it how it is. And people are attracted to that, not thinking that you have to be perfect, but that you have to be honest, especially with lots of other MLMs and lots of other opportunities and Every day I get added into a group that I didn't ask to be added into. So you have to be different. You have to go against the grain and be more authentic and be more real than everyone else who's posting their perfect crafted pictures, right? You've got to keep it real and talk about those ups and downs, but also make it simple and talk about those five to seven areas that are of interest to you because if they're interesting to you, they're going to be interesting to your target market. Okay, so those five to seven areas and then some of those questions that I named before are things to think about while you're doing your personal development and um, your workouts, right? Especially, and even if it didn't happen that day, jot down the idea in your phone in the note section and then block, a, block 10 minutes out later that night and craft the post so you have it. Because here's the real realness of this. There are days that I don't wanna do anything but I have huge goals in this business. I have a whole team of people that I want to lead from the front. So it's so important to me that I show up when, um, when I'm leading a team, right? And even if you don't have any coaches yet, or you have one coach, or you're like, Keisha, I have one discount coach. She's not even building the business. I was a discount coach. So you never know, right? Um, and I watched what Brigitte did. You best I believe I did. I watched everything that she did. Um, so another thing, just one other, because the content part I think is so important, and then I have one other thing I want to talk to you guys about. Um, with content, another way to easily generate content is to take time to block out, number one, your business story. My business story hasn't changed. I was a reluctant challenger turned discount coach because, duh, 25% discount, come on, um, turned hobby coach turned six months later, holy crap, this could totally change the trajectory of my future, my kid's future, my grandkid's future, like for real, that big. I, I saw the magnitude when I went to Summit and I saw people like Scotty that were speaking at Summit and I sat on the floor and watched my coach Brigitte speak at Summit and two years later, I got to do the same thing and she sat on the floor and watched me speak. So it's been crazy how that trajectory has happened, um, but it was with that belief showing up at those events and um, making sure that you understand that your business story is relatable authentically. You don't have to pretend like you came into this business and we're gung ho and hit the ground running just because you want to attract people that are doing that, right? Telling your authentic business story shows people that you were skeptical too, right? You had reservations too, but look at how far you've come and what made you click to get to that point. So I talk about my business story at least every week in some capacity. And if you have a short business story of the things that you are concerned about, it's really easy to weave that into posts too. And a lot of times people think, oh, I don't want to talk about this because I just talked about this. Truth is, people that are following you, they're going to read it anyways. Um, people that are just starting to follow you, the friends that you're adding, the new people that are coming into your network, they don't know because they didn't watch you a week ago. And a lot of times people don't even see your Facebook posts when you put them out there. So don't get worried about that stuff. Um, your fitness story. Like I said, your fitness story is so relatable to your target market because it's often how they start. So if you are postpartum started your fitness journey, talk about being postpartum starting your fitness journey and relate back to old me versus new me. Um, because like I said, that is the person that you're also going to bring into your tribe. And of course you're going to bring other people that don't fit into that exact niche, but I can't even tell you how many people that when I post a challenge group announcement and I talk about um, doing a fad diet before a girlfriend's wedding that I was in or crying, looking at my closet, trying to pretend like I had it all together and overcompensating with my personality, even though inside I was so insecure. I talk about that and I get messages from people that are like, I felt like you were talking to me. And I was really, really nervous to make that adjustment in my business because I thought that I had to talk to the masses um, and say, everyone join my group, but I would rather hit hard with fewer people because then they're going to come in and they're going to vibe with me tough and they're going to be lifers because they're going to be advocates of the products. They're going to be tied to the community. They're going to be tied to me and they're not going anywhere. Even when someone offers them something else to go do something else weird, right? They're not going anywhere. So, um, 
know your fitness story and, and make sure you go back to when you first started. Cause if right now you've got a six pack rock and abs and you are just like, I've never had a six pack. So who knows what that would look like maybe one day, but I talk about that old me person often. Okay. So don't be afraid to do that. Also your Shakeology story. I drank Shakeology because it was convenient and I was getting Starbucks protein packs um, at 10 a.m. when I was working and I'd be hangry an hour later and I spent like $8. Um, that's my Shakeology story. Not glamorous and I don't even talk about the testimony of Shakeology for me. I talk about the testimony of Shakeology for other people often. The reason that I got Shakeology is literally convenience and taste and it made me feel good. So that's often what I'm talking about in private messages too. I very rarely get people to ask me about the prebiotics, probiotics, like what's the changa, like all that stuff. I very rarely talk about the actual ingredients because that is not what attracted me to Shakeology. I was literally attracted because I thought it would make my life easier and it did and it has and I've drank it every single day for the last three and a half, four years. Um, so know that too. So your business story, your fitness story, your Shakeology. Two more topic areas that I think are really helpful to post about on social media. I told you guys, I want to give you like tangible stuff, not just pump you up, give you something you can actually implement. Um, your objections and your fears. So when you are getting objections, a lot of times I actually just had a call with a coach last night. She's like, I'm getting so many price objections. I was like, they don't understand the value then. So why don't you publicly talk about how you justified the cost, whatever objections that you're getting, Use that as post content. If I didn't get objections, I honestly feel like I would lose a huge area of what I posted out um, because objections give you, give you content and it makes you connect with that person. Like I, especially I asked a coach to be, or I invited this girl to be a coach the other day. And she said like, I would love to do what you're doing, but I don't have social media experience. Okay. Jot down on my phone, do a post about social media and how I didn't have any social media experience either. Right? So all of those objections. And if you're doing your invites and you're doing those, um, vital behaviors, you're going to be getting objections. Most people in my experience, 80% of people say no when they're first asked, I expect that they're going to say no. And the difference between me and probably Scotty and other people in the network that you maybe look at or coaches that you respect in this network, I'm not going to write them off because they say no, I'm, I'm expecting that they're going to say no. And then I'm going to continue to build the relationship anyway, knowing that I did my job by inviting them. And then when they're ready, they're not going to go to anyone else because they know that I still care about them, even though they said no. In fact, I'd rather them say no, um, because then I can go on and continue to build that relationship. I talked about that actual concept on the national wake up call because it's my favorite thing about this business. Show the people that you really do care and continue the relationship when they say no. And then they're lifers, right? Um, the last thing is making sure that you're sharing behind the scenes stuff of what you actually do as a coach. So I really like Instagram. Um, and I don't even have a huge following on Instagram, but I love it because of Instagram stories and I can share, like I talked about that I was going to host this call. Um, I can share my real life. Um, so people can understand what a day in the life is like as a coach, what's a day in the life like if they turn this into a full-time business. Um, and they see the realness of it, right? Like when my boyfriend comes home with, with cookies and I'm just like staring at them, like me mugging him and you know, me like, I'm not eating these cookies. People can see that I'm a real human. I'm not this like person that can say no to cookies every day. Um, and to close up like the whole aspect of Shakeology and um, your fitness story and your business story and your objections and all of these things that I'm telling you to post about. Remember that this is like a reality show, right? This is like you're just sharing your life. The thing that people get scared about, and I think is a, sometimes our brains do this, which is really weird, is you think that because it's a reality show that you have to have an audience, but you don't have to have an audience because most of your challengers and your coaches are people that are creepishly watching you that you've sent an initial message to, or you've sent an invite to, and they didn't respond to you, or they didn't follow back up with you. You don't need to have an audience. Like you were, you're, you're deciding what your content is based off of your comments and likes a lot of times when Facebook's so weird, algorithms are so weird. Sometimes I post something and I'm like, this is gonna crush it. And I'm like, no one likes my post, whatever. I liked it, okay, I'll just leave it up there and we'll see what happens. Or sometimes I post something and I'm like, why do people think that was so great? I have no idea. So there is a mystery to it. It's social media, it's life, it's business, Facebook change in their algorithms, all that crap. But pay attention to things that do vibe with your target market, but don't feel defined by the amount of likes or comments or shares or any of that crap. None of that matters and it has nothing to do with who you are as a human, but it is important to make sure that you are 
putting content out there because people are watching you and they're waiting to see that you're going to stick with this. They're waiting to see that if, if your girlfriend, like one of your girlfriends gets pregnant tomorrow or someone that you know, your wife's coworker or whatever, gets pregnant tomorrow, you want to have enough credibility that she's coming to you as soon as she's cleared to work out again, or she's coming to you to work out through her entire pregnancy. Like she knows you're going to be here nine months from now. It takes time consistency to build that credibility, but you can crush it right now. You can crush this game and all of this stuff that I've learned about social media. It's so fun because I literally get to put out, project this, whatever I want. And that's what I attract. So I don't attract a lot of people that have a lot of like naysaying and that are like Debbie Downers, honestly, because they're annoyed of me because I'm too positive. Okay, whatever. I don't really want you on my team anyways, right? Like if you're authentic to yourself, you're going to attract people that are similar to you. Um, and that's what's really, really fun because then you build this community and you change your whole life and you change the lives of hundreds and intern thousands of people. Like you have that ability. This is a gift that you were given. This team, I didn't even understand, you guys. I didn't even know who Brigitte was. I didn't know Scotty or Lindsay. I didn't know any of this. Like, I hit the jackpot by randomly coming across Brigitte, not because of all of these people that have seen all of these accolades and success, but because they're humble, gracious, kind people that are so invested in making sure that other people duplicate the, the success that we've had. We are on the best team in the entire network. If anyone is watching this from a different network, sorry, because this is literally the best team in the entire network because of the people and the plethora of information that you have at your fingertips. Just don't let the fact that you don't think you know it all hinder you from actually going for it because the best decision that I've made besides going on a date with my boyfriend was going for this business because it's totally changed everything. So that's what I have for you guys today. Hopefully that's helpful. Happy to answer questions or anything, but I love that Keisha. That was absolutely, look at my notes. Yay, good. I think that's like the most notes I've ever taken. So I want you guys to go check out Keisha's social media. Uh, I've been, Keisha, I've been freakishly, I've commented on some, so it's not freakishly stalking your social media, but I've been even watching and learning. I realized after talking with, after listening to you in the social media surge and then talking to you in person, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm speaking only to coaches. And that's, I'm like not speaking to the person that's not a coach that needs to join our team in our business. So I've been adjusting some things and it's already working. Uh, I, I can see that I need to do some more still, but I've been applying this stuff. So I want you guys to apply this. I took some awesome notes. Um, follow her, go look at her stuff on social media, look at how she writes it, and then really do the action steps that she shared with you guys of mapping out beforehand what you wanna do. I had some huge takeaways, like I had people that struggle with self support and I was like, that was like the perfect answer of just having a, a meeting with them every week to plan out the week, talk about the things they need to do in their life that week with the kids classes or whatever it is, and then share what you need to do. And that way they're involved. I love, that was like genius. I was like light bulb in my head right there. So we appreciate all the value that you gave us today. And we want you guys to know um, that I want you to know, Keisha, that we're grateful for your time and the energy that you put into sharing with us, everything that's worked for you and for staying true to who you are and sharing authentically because um, because of that, we get to learn from you today and feel your passion, excitement for it and take those into our life. So uh, with that being said, we have our next week's 30-minute uh, mentor series at the same time, same place, same link. We invite you guys to come to invite your friends on the call as well. And that will end this out.